Whenever the Death Guard Traitor Legion gathers together a formidable army and launches a sector-wide assault on the Imperium of Man, whatever Chaos Lord, Plague Surgeon, or Champion is leading the war is always flanked by a powerful and menacing squad of neuro-corrupted Chaos Terminators known as the Death Shroud. These massive, grotesque monsters swing their infectious power sites as they clear the way for their masters. Hidden behind a massive cloud of filth and pestilence, these mutated abominations are the elite warriors of the Death Guard, a cadre of soldiers shrouded in mystery and ancient traditions that stretch as far back as the Great Crusade. And that's what we're going to talk about today in another episode of 40 Facts About the 40k Universe. If you're new to the channel, allow me to introduce myself. I am your host, Gersh1, your guide through the decaying universe of Warhammer 40,000. For this whole week, I will be covering Nurgle lore, so if you have any suggestions or ideas for future videos, please comment down in the comment section below. Also, I'm going to link a playlist uh, that has all Nurgle videos that I've already created, so if you want to binge watch that, you could do that. And if you enjoy lore videos on Grandfather Nurgle, please slice through the like button with your power scythe. It helps this video get to a wider audience, and then it tells YouTube you want to see more 40k content. But with all that said, let's get into 40 facts and lore on the Death Shroud. Known by many names such as the Sites of Nurgle and the Pale Harvestmen, the Death Shroud are veteran plague-written heretical space marines that are handpicked by their lord to serve as bodyguards and direct representatives of the Demon Prince Mortarion. In fact, the origin of this elite cadre of warriors goes back to the Great Crusade era, where they served as the Primarch's honor guard. Just as mysterious as they are today, secrecy surrounded the Death Shroud in their past. They have always acted as Mortarion's enforcers, defenders, and most importantly, his counsel. They have always been the Primarch's confidants, and as such, they swear a binding oath of secrecy once inducted into the ranks of the Death Shroud. Those veteran Death Guard legionnaires that caught their master's eye in combat through acts of extreme bravery and valor were singled out and selected to become members of the Death Shroud. But unlike other Honor Guard units, once chosen, these Battle Brothers would cast off their former life as a common rank-and-file Space Marine of the Death Guard Legion, leaving behind any glory or fame to swear a binding oath of secrecy as members of the Eyes of Mortarion, aka the Death Shroud. Each member of the Death Shroud would then be listed as killed in action to get rid of any suspicion as to their true identity and to hide their existence from any other Imperial faction. Each Death Shroud Astartes identity was known only to the Primarch himself, even after their death. This would allow each new member a unique freedom away from the prying eyes of suspected spies and the confidence to serve only the Lord Mortarion. To further protect their identity, the Death Shroud would forever conceal their faces behind heavily enclosed helmets, masks, and hoods. This only increased the Terminator-clad warrior's ominous aura, striking fear into everyone around them, including friendly forces. To add to their foreboding appearance, the Death Shroud wore artificer-crafted, cataphracty patterned Terminator armor of the highest quality. This suit of armor gave the warrior more mobility while not losing any of the strength and toughness. They were literally walking tanks. Like their Primarch, each member of the Death Shroud wielded a large power scythe known as a Man Reaper, a two-handed melee weapon capable of slicing through the shield of a Titan or cutting an Orc War boss in two. Built into one of their wrists was a hand flamer with a specially formulated chemical concoction that burned hotter and longer than regular flamers. And although their war gear seemed simple enough for an honor guard, the Death Shroud was perfectly equipped to perform their primary duty of protecting their Primarch. It was the Death Shroud's sacred duty for at least two of their numbers to never stray more than 49 paces from Mortarion, always keeping constant vigil over their lord. When not in battle, the Stoic warriors stood uniformly at attention next to Mortarion's side. Their presence in a room was intimidating to even other Adeptus Astarte warriors. In silence, they observed every action and reaction taken by those granted an audience with Mortarion. In battle, when not fulfilling their role as their Primarch's bodyguards, Death Shroud squads consisted of 2 to 10 members and were typically used to assail the most heavily defended objectives on the battlefield, and of course to secure them from the advance of other allied forces. These warriors appeared like armored Grim Reapers, slowly moving toward their target. Like killing automated machines, they struck an eerie, inhuman tone. Squads of these veterans sometimes made use of land raiders as transports in order to achieve their role. Now, during the Horus Heresy, Mortarion turned to the worship of Grandfather Nurgle. 
and as such, his honor guard were also corrupted. Devoted to the god of plague and disease meant that these warriors were swollen with unnatural powers. Their armor cracked and bubbled as squirming tentacles sprouted from their bodies, horns tore through their heads, and demonic maggots burled into their flesh. Clouds of plague flies boiled around these warriors while vile smog spilled from the vents in their armor to choke and blind their foe. These chaotic blessings allowed the Death Shroud to strike with a speed that belies their massive distended frames. They are just as demonic as anything found in the Garden of Nurgle. Their mutated bodies are blessed with the god's ultimate gift, immortality. Unless killed in battle, the Death Shroud have everlasting life. This means that even after 10,000 years since the betrayal, some of the very same Death Shroud that were fighting during the heresy are still fighting in the current era. Their role has changed slightly, but they're just as menacing. Mortarion dispatches these corrupted warriors to aid in countless battles all across the stars with different warbands. They rarely speak, only to convey Mortarion's command, and when they do, their voices emerge a rattling hiss. They have no battle cry and always butcher in silence. They have embodied the faceless, wordless onset of inescapable death as their shadow falls across the enemies. They are Mortarion's dark emissaries, and they kill with the authority of the demon Primarch himself. On the battlefield, these deadly warriors stalk relentlessly towards the foe's front lines without a care in the world. The protective powers of the Cataphracty Warplate combined with the disease resilience bestowed upon them by Nurgle's gifts make the Death Shroud nearly impossible to kill. They take great pride in this fact, advancing into the teeth of the fiercest firestorms, mocking their enemies' attempt to lay them low with their methodical movements in silence. This arrogance rallies their Death Guard brothers as they march close behind. Wherever the Death Shroud goes, the battle tips in their favor. Just imagine how terrifying it must be to see a massive, billowing cloud of flies and putrid smoke slowly making its way across the battlefield. The closer it gets, the more you hear the screams and the sounds of a power scythe slicing through flesh. Until finally, through the smog, a squad of giant demonic demigods show up ready to reap your head. Their presence is a mixed blessing at best. The Death Shroud will fight with all the skill and strength and support of their assigned champion and prove to be an undeniable asset in battle. Yet all the while, the Death Shroud are judging upon their master's behalf. If the champion is successful, the Death Shroud departs at the end of the battle, leaving as silently as they came. If their charge fails in their duty, however, the judgment of Mortarion is swift, deadly, and utterly inescapable. And that's the lore on the Death Shroud, an awesome unit, and on the tabletop they look amazing if they are painted right. Um, unfortunately, I'm not a Death Guard player, but after you know reading the lore, I feel like, damn, I wish I was. Um, for this entire week, I am going to be covering Nurgle still. I haven't been on it that well for the past couple weeks, so this week I really want to like zero in and try to give you guys as many 40 Facts videos as I can. Um, I'm freeing up now with like work, life, and all that kind of stuff, so that's kind of being pushed aside, so now I can focus on the lore videos that you guys love uh, to watch. Uh, what I need from you guys is to let me know in the comment section below what type of videos you guys want to hear about. Uh, again, pertaining to Nurgle, more Terry on the Death Guard, all that kind of stuff. So for the first two days, I'm going to be in the comments section talking to you guys. Um, just let me know. Uh, and I really appreciate you guys watching. If you guys want to support uh, the channel, smashing the like button really helps. Sharing with your friends on your Facebook page, Twitter, whatever it is, uh, that helps. And then also we have a Patreon. It's just a dollar a month, so it's less than a paint tin at GW. Uh, but with that dollar, it does help us out a lot because we can kind of like slow down and, and, and focus on, on creating um, more content for you guys. Um, but um, yeah, thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. This was Gershwan with One Mind Syndicate signing out. <laughs>